Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be reviewing Unit 7, Topic 8 of AP Psychology, Humanistic Theories of Personality. Humanistic Theories of Personality focus on positive aspects of people. Carl Rogers focused on the idea of the self-concept, which is an individual's thoughts and feelings and questions about who they are. Rogers believed that individuals were good in nature and sought social approval from others. This is known as positive regard. He believed that that as long as we are not held back by negative environments, that we will be ready to grow into good humans and achieve self-actualization. If we get positive regard and it aligns with our own thinking and understanding of ourselves, then it becomes part of our self-concept. If, however, we get mixed responses from others and our self-evaluation and the views of others are not the same, we may become more anxious and possibly even depressed. When our positive regard aligns with our own self-evaluations, we experience congruency. But if others' views of us don't align with our self-evaluations, we experience incongruency. We can gain insight into a person's personality by using questionnaires that would ask individuals to describe themselves as they would ideally like to be and as they actually are. The answers to those questions, if they're similar, would show that an individual has positive self-concept. If we illustrate Roger's ideas of the self-concept, we'll start with an individual seeking approval. From there, individuals start to compare their ideas of themselves with what others believe about them. Then after that, we start to see an individual's personality take shape. Now, when talking about Roger's ideas of the self-concept, I'm reminded of a quote by Charles Cooley. It goes as follows. I am not who you think I am. I am not who I think I am. I am who I think you think I am. This quote just illustrates some of the concepts we've been talking about in this video. Our personality is shaped not just by what others think of us, it's shaped by us trying to compare our own self-evaluations with how others see us. Now, another humanist that we need to talk about is Abraham Maslow. Maslow focused on how an individual's needs help shape their personality as they seek to satisfy the different needs throughout their lives. Remember, we talked about Maslow and his hierarchy of needs back in our Unit 7 Topic 1 video. Maslow believed that an in order for us to reach self-actualization, which remember is when an individual is motivated to strive for their full potential, you need to satisfy your basic needs first. At the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy of needs is an individual's physiological needs, things like food, water, and shelter. Once an individual has satisfied those needs, they focus on safety to make sure they have a safe home or a secure job. From there, they focus on love and belonging. Individuals start to develop strong friendships and connections with their family. Once they have a strong support system, they focus internally and build their self-esteem. This is where they really start to develop confidence and respect for others and a desire to be unique. Lastly, the individual reaches self-actualization, which is when they are motivated to be the best person they can be. They'll seek out more knowledge and explore their creativity and debate the larger questions of life. Now, this is just a quick overview of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you need a more in-depth review of the model, go back and watch my Unit 7 Topic 1 video. It's an important model to understand and you'll want to make sure that you are familiar with it before you take your test. So before we wrap up this video, I want to also quickly talk about the impact of culture on personality. We can see that some cultures promote collectivism, which is an ideology or tradition of supporting and promoting the group or family or society over the individual. Here, the important focus is the success of the group instead of your own individual accomplishment. With collectivism, your personality is connected to the belonging of the group. On the other side of the spectrum, we have individualism, which is when the focus is on individual achievement. Here, your identity is independent from the group, family, or society. There's more of a focus on individual accomplishments and achievements. Here it's important to focus on understanding how you are unique and focus on your own personal achievements than it is for you to be able to fit in and have your identity connected with the group at large. Every country and culture and family have different influences over how we develop and what becomes a priority for us. We can see that our personal goals, our self-concept, and our personality will change depending on if we are raised in a collectivist culture or an individualistic culture. And just like that, another topic review video is done. Time to answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comments section down below. As always, if you found value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my ultimate review packet. It'll help you get an A in your class and a five on your national exam. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin and I will see you next time online.